Okay, now the question is, what does Leia represent? So the Mithra Rebbe continues and says, Leia represents the thought of the person. Does not pre- represent so much the speech of the person at all, it represents the thought of a person. Looking a little closer, zooming in, what is the difference between the thought of a person and the speech of a person? The thought of a person, the person is closed in their world and not open and sharing with the world outside of them. Speech of a person opens up the person to the outside world. Leia represents machshava, thought. Machshava, thought, is something that never stops. A person does not stop thinking. And therefore, Leia is called machshava because the word Leia means also nila, tired. It's exhausted. It's an <laughs> over-exhausting uh, function that is constantly happening. A person sleeps, he dreams. There's always something happening. Although it doesn't make any sense as dreams, sometimes you have like two opposite extremes, like an like a, a elephant in the eye of a needle, going in the eye of a needle. This is something that in nature it can't happen. But generally, whatever a person thinks in the day sometimes happens dreams at night. The thoughts do not stop. It's like a flow. And that's why it's also called a nor, a river. Machshav is called a river. It's constantly working. Why was Yankiv not so pleased for his function, for his project with Leia? Because Leia is the union of concealed. Concealed. When a person, for example, in the middle of prayer, is understanding something and, and is able to understand it, so there's a certain yearning to it, there's a certain interest in it. But when somebody is working on something, trying to understand something, but that something is not accessible, the person gets very, gets very upset. I can't understand it, it's beyond my understanding, my comprehension. This is the level of Leia. And therefore, it was Snua Leia. She was not uh, uh, liked because that's not, her function is not what Yankev was aiming for. Yankev was aiming to draw down <coughs> through an open channel in order that it should reach the whole creation around him in order to accomplish what he needs to accomplish. And therefore, Leia is referred to Machshava because it's Leia Nila, tired, exhausted, over time. This happens in the daytime, this happens in the prayer, this happens in the, in the, in the sleep. To mention it on a, on a level of, a, on the level, the difference in time, there's an interesting discourse here from the Tzemach Tzedek. Tzemach Tzedek says the difference between the revelation of the time of the temple and after that is this difference between Rachel and Leah. In the time of the temple, there was open revelation. Ten miracles, Godliness was seen, godliness was, 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 uh, was uh, visualized, it, everything, it was very obvious. After, after the Khurb method of destruction, Tzemach Tzedek says an interesting word. This is based on a discourse from the Alter Rebbe, of Shneir Zaman of Liadi. It says, after that, it's layer remains, it's thought. And big tzaddikim were able to attain through Ruach HaKedesh, through holy uh, 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 intuition, they were able to, to, to obtain uh, 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 revelations. He says that's why the Arizal was able to attain higher vis- uh, 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 actual <coughs> revelations that Tanoim and Amiroyim were not able to wow. obtain. He says this is only for great people, but most of the people cannot accept any, cannot, are not vessels for it because it's Machshava, and Machshava is concealed. So people, ordinary people, cannot re- receive the revelations in the time of the exile. So this is basically how Rochel and Leah are explained. Rochel is the time of the temple, revelations, and Leah is the time that it was uh, after that, which is person needs to be a certain vessel, certain appropriate in order to receive it. Now the, so now the Mithal Rebbe turns back and says, and with this we'll understand the union of Leah, Shem Hagdela, as we mentioned earlier, Machshava. She's machshava, removed. And therefore, Yankee felt that his main, main investment is in Rachel. And that's why he said seven years. In addition to the seven years, there's also another interesting fact in regards to Yankee. He was a shepherd. He was a shepherd of sheep, Tzoyin. 
What is Tzoyin? Why don't we see it by Avram and Yitzchak? So much the idea of being a shepherd. So the answer is because the aim of Avram and Yitzchak was chesed and gvura. Generous and strictness. Yain Kev's thing was mercy. Mercy in the sense that he takes from a very high level and brings it down to a very low level. This is the meaning of the word sheep, tzoyin. Tzoyin means yitzia, extracting, drawing down. Drawing down from a high level that it should be drawn down and brought down till this physical world. And that's why he was considered, his work was dealing with sheep because this is basically drawing down the higher revelations from Kesser and bringing it down into this physical world. So this reflected in his profession. In addition to that, he also had the different kinds of sheep, the striped ones, the, 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 all kinds of sheep. So it says this is also showing how there was a blend of everything together. Wow. Because Yain Kev ref reflects the idea of blending together all opposites. Mercy blends together generosity together with strictness. And therefore, by Yain Kev, the main uh, objective was basically his scalalus, blending all the details together. Together with that, making sure that all the details are permeated with the higher revelations from the higher infinite worlds. And this is basically why, uh, why uh, uh, Yankiv was working so hard because he was interested that it should come down in every detail. Every aspect of the attributes in the higher world and every aspect in the lower world should receive what they need to receive. And therefore, he said a very interesting thing over here. He says that that's why he was also, because his idea was mercy, where do we find amongst the animals, one that's connected more with mercy, this is the Indian of Tzoyin, sheep. By them in nature, there is more the Indian of Rachamim, mercy, than the other behemoths, other animals. As we see also from their sound, from their, when, they, when they moan. So they're also in a merciful way. The sound, everything gives off an expression of mercy. This is basically reflecting what actually Yankiv wanted to do and who he worked with. He worked through in this world everything around him. His whole package was all connected with, for this, was aiming for the project of drawing down mercy, which is his scalalus, blending together everything and bringing down godliness into the lowest levels in this world. In addition to that, sheep have a, a nature of being more subdued than other behemoths. More subdued, more tender, more softer than other, other animals. Although, uh, although an ox is ready for, for a yoke, to, be, to, 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 to put a yoke on him, to carry a load, but still he will sometimes also kick and he might get wild sometimes. Uh, the same thing with a cow and others. It says when it comes to a sign, sheep, their nature softer than others. And this is basically, with this we'll understand, he says, why he loved the Rachel. Because the idea of Malchus, Rochel, the idea of Malchus is basically the expression of the source of the Jewish souls. Nishama Yisrael, the source of the Jewish souls, Knesset Yisrael, is the attribute of Malchus, of royalty. This is where it starts from. And that's why it says in Tanya, in chapter 45, that it says, Vayishak Yankiv L'Rochel, that Yankiv kissed Rochel. So it says, what happened over here? He was Me'eder, he brought down an awakening from above on Rachel who represents the source of the Jewish souls. He is bringing down an awakening of mercy on the Jewish souls in this physical world, on the source of the Jewish souls, which Rachel is the Akedah Sabayis. She is the, the foundation of the house, of, the, of, of Yankiv's house, to the extent that even the children of Leah admitted to that, that when it came to build a house, by Boyaz, when Boyaz met Rus, and it says to build a house, it says it should be the house like Hirochel Ukeleya, like Rochel and Leah. Although they come from Leah, Yehuda comes from Leah, but still they admitted that Rochel was the, the lady yeah, in the yeah. house by Yankiv. Wow. So therefore, Rochel is basically the representation, present, represents the idea of, of uh, the Jewish souls. And therefore, he wanted, this was the work that he wanted to uh, work seven years in order to bring down the seven attributes from Keser, from the crown. 
and he wanted to bring it down to Rachel, who was the channel that would channel it down all the way to this physical world. And he was the union of Rachamim, mercy. So because of mercy, he has this unique blend that he can unite two opposites together. So therefore, he can reach out higher and deeper into the highest level of Keser to bring down the unique quality of the crown of Keser into the lowest worlds. Then the Friedrich, the Mittel Rebbe, starts folding up the Maimer and he says that with this we'll understand why we find the unique quality when we speak about the beauty of our matriarchs. So there's different ways how they're described. By Rivka, we say Tevas Mara, a nice complexion, but we don't speak about the features. It comes to the other uh, 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 Mois, there's also different descriptions. By Rochel, we find a double quality that her features were in proportion one to another. In addition to that, also the complexion, the reflection, the light on her face. So the, the Mittal Rebbe continues and says, what is this idea of the features that exactly the size of everything was exactly proportion one to another? He said that this basically reflects the union of Iskalulus, the blend, how everything falls in place. Everything it, it coexists with the other and completes the other. Every feature, the facial expressions, uh, uh, completed and enhanced the other features. And therefore, this is the idea of iskalulus. Iskalulus means a blend together. And this is what Yankiv was looking for. Yankiv's idea, because Yankiv is from the level of mercy, which blends together two opposites, therefore this was something that was needed for his function. Function that he saw in Rachel, this feature, that she had this idea of blending together, that everything blended together, all the features worked together and blended as, as one. And one contributed to the other. In addition to that, she also had Tevas Mara. Tevas Mara is the complexion, the reflection, the light in the face, which is basically also the Inyan of Malchus. And as he explains over here, in general, speaks about the Inyan of uh, the, the beauty by women, as he explains the whole Inyan in Apichsidus, that since they're on the level of Malchus, so therefore there's a certain charm that they have in order to awaken from a higher level, so therefore, he says, that's why there's the union of Yefi, Enishel of Yefi. So therefore, this is basically how he explains the union of Rachel. With this, he explains why Yankev loved Rachel, because this was basically a very spiritual investment, a great spiritual investment, in which Yankev wanted that everything that he's doing should not just remain in a higher world, but come down also in this physical world.